Okay, we're here at the Canola School at realagriculture.com with Matt Stafford again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, looking at plant stands. So I guess across Western Canada this spring, we're seeing some very adverse conditions. In Manitoba, we've got cold and very wet conditions. Guys can't even get their crop in. And we get to Southern Alberta, uh, Central Alberta, it's been cool but extremely dry in some areas. So we're seeing the whole gamut in terms of emergence issues this year. Um, when we're talking about emergence, now that the crop's been in the ground for two, three, maybe even four weeks in some areas, it's going to be really important to get out there and start scouting to see what you've got in terms of plant stand and how we can manage it properly to get it through to the uh, end of the year and hopefully take that crop off in good shape at harvest time. Um, one way you can do that is to get out there and scout how many plants per meter squared you've got or plants per square foot. Uh, it's sort of up to you what your preference is. Um, with the wider row spacings that we've got now in a lot of drills, those 12 inch row spacings and I've heard even some 14 inch row spacings, going on a meter square basis might be a little bit better measurement tool um, just due to the fact that you're going to have a whole foot of area between those rows. So uh, this is a quarter square meter. Um, when you're scouting with a quarter square meter, throw this down in several areas all throughout the field um, or with your square foot and count how many plants there is and write it all down. And take an average across all the places that you've thrown that hoop down in. And if you've got fields that look like they may have issues in terms of how many plants you've got if you're on the low end uh, you may want to uh, stop even like between 30 and 50 sites in any given field write that number down and then make an average up when you're done at the end of that field um, where do I, go now here? I guess there's been a number of issues uh, in terms of emergence this spring like I mentioned for the cool wet or cool and dry in lots of areas um, all over Western Canada there's been reports of spotty flea beetle infestations as well as cutworm problems here and there. Uh, some wireworms showing up as well uh, and then there's the potential as well for um, seedling diseases to show up. So getting out there scouting and knowing what you're looking at is going to be crucial to figure out what's going on, how to manage it and how to potentially prevent it from happening in the future. Um, your Rhizoctonia will tend to show up in cool dry soils. Uh, Pythium and Fusarium that will tend to show up in cool wet soils so knowing what you're dealing with is going to be important to diagnosing disease issues that way. Um, if you're talking about flea beetles they're going to typically show up around your field margins, uh, ditches, sloughs and stuff like that. That's where they overwinter so check those field margins and check for uh, pitting and uh, you know, uh, shot holes, pitting on the leaves, and if it's been very cool where you are, uh, they'll even try to stay out of the wind in the cool weather, and they'll actually stem feed close to ground level. So, look for flea beetles very closely. If you're seeing hilltops with very poor stands, it might be due to dryness, and the seeds are stranded in dry soil. But also, it could potentially be due to the fact that you've got cutworms in those areas. They'll tend to hang out in the drier soils, cutworms like warm dry soils, and so hilltops, south facing slopes, they'll tend to be where you're going to find your cutworms. Wireworms are the opposite, you're going to find those in moister soil, and so wireworms will tend to be in your lower areas. Uh, Wireworms, you're going to want to be looking in the top six inches. Uh, they'll, they'll move quite a bit within the soil profile, but cutworms, they do like that drier soil, so you'll tend to find them in the top one to two inches. Uh, wireworms, you're going to see a shredding effect of the stem just below the soil surface. You're going to, the plant might start to wilt a bit, and if you dig just below the surface, you're going to see that that stem's actually shredded below the surface. And cutworms, you'll typically see that plant cut off right at the soil surface and laying on the ground. We've got our, our quarter square meter here, so let's throw it down, just pick a random spot, throw it down, and let's see what we've got for plants per meter squared in here. Um, in this specific spot, we've got one, two, that one's three, four. Make sure you dig through all the trash, make sure you find any little ones that are just coming. There's another one there, so that's five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight plants in a quarter square meter. You times that by four, that gives you 32 plants 
per square meter. Um, ideally, you're wanting to shoot for 70 to 140 plants per square meter or 7 to 14 plants per square foot. So this would be a little bit on the lower side, but canola does have the ability to compensate quite well. It'll just bush out and that plant will get that much bigger. It'll just end up with a bigger main stem, and more side branching. So the maturity on this stand potentially could be a few days longer than it would have otherwise been if you would have run into that more ideal situation of 7 to 14 plants per square foot. But at the end of the day, this is still quite manageable and I've seen and heard of stands that are a lot worse than this one in Western Canada uh, due to a number of factors. So if this grower was concerned about uh, reseeding, would there be any warrant at this time of the year? You know, we're in the first week of June. With, there, with this low of a plant stand, would there be any warrant to reseed? Um, I guess at this point in the year, yeah. It's, if it was mid-May, I'd you know, potentially recommend that a person seed if they're reseed, sorry, if they're less than one or two plants per square foot but if you've got if you're in that three to four plants per square foot it's a little on the lower side but considering uh, first week of June and it's dry now if you worked this up or sprayed it out and seeded barley into this uh, what would you end up with I don't think you'd end up with much of a crop at all yeah, so it's almost the same result yeah essentially it's yeah you're, you're just gonna be causing yourself even more costs by removing this crop and then you have to go through the work and the expense of seeding another crop and so you've got that machinery expense wear and tear the labor the seed cost and maybe fertilizer maybe not depending on what you decide to do that way so and it's like from a cost effectiveness perspective I think that leaving this stand would be by far the best bet so this field was seeded somewhere you know uh, between five and five and a half pounds um, plant stand is quite low uh, may not be a case of seed mortality, but more a case of just how dry it is. Some plants haven't even germinated yet. Yeah, definitely. And we were looking around before, Sean, and we did see the odd seed that was stranded in dry soil. So, you know, that's that's definitely reality this year in a lot of areas is that those seeds got planted and they're just sitting there waiting for some moisture to get growing. Um, a lot of areas have also experienced frosts. So depending on if some of those very first uh, plants that actually emerged maybe got froze off, these ones came a little bit later. Um, that's a possibility as well. There's been several frost events that we've had in May and in the first day or two of June as well. So uh, we are experiencing a lot of, the whole gamut's getting thrown at us this year and it's just a matter of trying to manage the plants that you've got left and you know trying to make the best of what you've got. So in this field, it is a uh, Roundup Ready. So what we're gonna have to do is just be extra vigilant on the flea beetles and the different insect issues. That's definitely gonna be key. Um, it's very dry, so there's not a lot of weeds growing yet. But um, when we do get a shot of rain and those weeds start to come up, we're gonna wanna make sure we're really, really on top of our herbicide applications as well, making sure that we're removing those weeds as early as possible to keep this canola as competitive as it can be. and doing that definitely first in crop herbicide application maybe a second and potentially even a third depending on what happens we're it's going to be more management intensive to to keep a thinner stand going and keep it going well through to the end but at the end of the day if you got to spray one more time in crop to make it get through so you can get that investment back you know it's less than ideal but it's better than the alternative of letting it go and not getting anything okay thanks a lot matt